Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Killjoy. A lot of stuff went down in this episode, so let's break everything down. I do like the fact is that uh, Del Say has knocked out most of the episode, I guess. It's like, well, for one, going back to being human and pushing out the hybrid baby that she ended up pushing out. Which is a big focus in this episode. Well, a lot of other things we got to talk about. There's a whole Dutch and Dab situation where you're like, oh, wow, that's okay. So that's probably going to get a little complicated. But I mean, it's like, oh, it's good because they haven't seen each other in such a long time. It's like, but then it's like, oh, yeah, let's not treat this like it's more than anything else. But then they start making out and they kind of shack up together. And it's like, okay, that's definitely going to be interesting. Interesting, especially considering the weird, awkward situation that this family's in. Because it's like, oh, yeah, Dad, Dab had a baby with Delsea, but the baby's part. Anila and Anila and Dutch being the same person but not the same person is just a whole bunch of weird when you break it down like that, I, which I've talked about and this show has talked about extensively uh, so far this season. But uh, interesting tone of events. I love the whole conversation between Johnny and Zeph because Zeph's kind of like, yeah, she feels a little weird because Johnny was kind of being an asshole before the whole being a whole one thing. So it's weird to seeing Johnny being back to be jokey Johnny and stuff like that. And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, that you had to deal with that. And, and she zaps him for good measures. And she's like, okay, it's all good. I'm like, okay. But uh, the big part of this episode turns out because of their child situation, which they still haven't named their kid, interestingly enough. The fact is that he's rapidly aging. He turns into a five-year-old, and then he becomes what I'd assume is either a preteen or a teen nature exactly. Um, so they're trying to find a way to kind of like slow his body's aging rate down. So they have to go to a guy that Pip knew. Um, I love that it's like, oh yeah, he's like, you know, oh, you got any more food? Because kid's eating up the place. It's like, oh, you guys are in the middle of you know, very important conversation. I'm gonna go over. Here. It's like, wow, do you guys have nothing in this but alcohol? Like, have you literally been drunk every time I met you? And it's kind of like, man, when you actually think about it in retrospect, you kind of forget how often they do drink, how much time they spend in Pre's bar. It's like, right, they pretty much drink all the time. I guess it kind of comes with the territory of being a killjoy because it's just everyone else spends time. That's kind of like the base of operations for a lot of stuff that's going down over the course of this show but still even on a ship they drink a lot too it's like oh we're celebrating drink something terrible happened drink you know so it's just i guess it's a give and take but uh them going to kidnap that dude craven i thought was so interesting it's funny because at first i was kind of like okay like dad's super against masks because he feel like they're stupid johnny super into him but i was like look at him but it's not even a mask, it's goggles. And then after after a while, it took me a while to go, all right, a lot of superheroes do that thing. Like, your Robins or your Green Arrows. It's like, oh yeah, you have this little thin mask, but it's like, what about the rest of your face? You know, there's there's something there, you know? So part of me is like, all right, you know, kind of almost having a Black Lightning thing going on. So I was kind of like, that Hydra didn't even, I was like, yeah, that's, that's kind of superhero logic in that regard. But I love the fact that they're running through the plan and stuff like that. Uh and the fact is, it ends with Johnny and uh, Dutch giving a smile and a thumbs up about the whole plan. And Pip being like, I am not going to be a part of this. He's actually kind of bowing out and they're looking at it like, what the, what's up with Pip acting like that? Turns out Craven isn't just some regular dude. He's downloaded his consciousness. I love that the way they ended up making him kind of like shut his system down but being like uh got you asshole like just having him say that out loud then the whole johnny and lucy thing i thought that's so adorable lucy being like am i am i not good enough for each other he's like of course you are but you know not in this situation so, so i'm not good enough and it's just kind of like this lover squat and he's just like baby almost like baby 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 just because this is about to happen doesn't mean things are going to change you're always going to be my my one and only type of thing, you know, and I love it. And even Pip and Zephyr over there, Pip's like, man, is it me or is, it, is this hot? And it's just, it's just so interesting. I thought it was kind of neat how the whole Pip situation of like, oh yeah, you're good with kids because him and, um, Davin and, uh, Del say his kid, uh, like kind of hit it off and it's like, oh, it's Uncle Pip. And like, he's like the only person, Pip is the only person the kid knows his name, and so it kind of builds build this bond, and Zeph is kind of like, oh yeah, look at you. He's like, well, for such a long time, like, those were the only people that looked up to him were his siblings and stuff like that, so 
I guess that's why he's so good with them because it's like, oh, in their eyes, he was he was cool, you know. And Zeph kind of felt like that's all she was good for was kind of you know potentially having kids, which obviously it's like, oh, then people don't know you at all, like thinking that that's all there is to you, you know, being the brainiac. Dude. So I do like, like I said, I really like that because it just seemed like a crazy like whoa at the end of season three about them getting together, but it seems like there's like more to it. Obviously, like Zeph kind of laid out the guidelines in previous episode, being like, yo, this is going to happen. But it's like I'm super okay with that. But it's like, it's kind of neat to see that, you know, that bond is growing. But I love like the flirtation between uh, Lucy and Craven. And he's just like, oh, look at you. And he's just, Johnny's like, knock it off. But Lucy being pissed at Johnny kind of goes into it a little bit too. Just because it's like, I'm supposed to be your one and only. And now you're complicated by bringing in another person. This wasn't a threesome type of situation going on, you know, the innuendo. Like, they don't expressly say it, but you can, the, the implications of the innuendos of the threesome that they kind of find themselves in. And Johnny just being like, oh, I need you to be part of this threesome for the purposes of getting what we needed to get a cure for my nephew but it'd get away stay away from lucy and he just pulls him out so are we done with craven or not i'm curious to see that's interesting to me i hope we i was kind of hoping oh maybe he's stick around but it's like of course johnny wouldn't let that and lucy being like oh maybe i'll do like a little chaos and he's like come on lucy like you gotta let this go i thought that was pretty neat um there's a whole situation of Pip taking uh, Dab's son away. Like, obviously, no, they still don't know about uh, Pip's whole situation. But he did say something interesting because he's like, they'll all die before you meet her or something like that. He's like, what do you mean by that? I forgot what the exact wording was that he said. It was kind of interesting. It was enough to kind of catch Pip. Because Pip wasn't 100% in control because he was like, oh, I'm confused. And when they finally caught up to him, he's like, what's going on? So I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, Dutch was explaining to Zeph. It's like, because Zeph is like, no, 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 this isn't him. Like, the fact, obviously, there's got to be something wrong here. But she's like, I, you know, Dutch has been like, I know not to really trust people. Like, the fact of the matter is... You can't really say that you know anyone because that's happened a lot for uh, Dutch. She's gotten caught off guard. So she's kind of telling Zeph that you need to be like that to be fair. Like, hey, look at the whole Devin situation. The first time they joke about it still is the fact is like, oh, yeah, let's not forget the time that uh, he tried to kill her and stab Johnny. So can't forget about that uh, situation back in season one. So it's that aspect of like. Just because you think you know someone doesn't mean you know all there is. So to be fair, Pip's situation is a little different because we know he's possessed by that thing. But that is ultimately the question, like, what does the lady want with him? And once again, like, the question I brought up before, what is that kid capable of being who he is? Anila's control over the green, which also Davin having his thing with the green, like, what does that mean coming together, you know? I mean, it makes you wonder, like, we do know that it is part Anila and part Davin, but it is like still Delsea being the mom. So it's like, is she like, is there, I mean, it seems like it's more so Anila's and Dab's DNA. So is there any part of Delsea, but it's still kind of her baby. It, it grew inside of her and everything. So I think that's kind of a pretty, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just something to think about. Well, I also thought was kind of neat the whole Johnny and Delsea situation because she's struggling with the whole feeling human again. Because I did forget, like, she has to have been hauling for a while, wasn't she? Yeah, maybe that's why she's kind of been the asshole she's been, like, most of the series, is because even at the beginning when we first got introduced to her, she was potentially a holin, because when Johnny stabbed her, she was um, holin enough not to die from the knife wound, or did he shoot her? I don't remember. I think he shot her, didn't he? Or did he stab her? Because, no, he shot her. It's been a while since I saw season two, so I'm, I'm blanking on that. But nevertheless, um... But it's like the only person who could understand her situation of like like readjusting to being human is Johnny, which is interesting because the one person who can help you is probably the one person who hates you the most. And for him, it's like, oh, you want it like, oh, like this whole situation, all of it's not going to stop until you make up for all that you've done, which they'll say it doesn't really know how to do it. But you see her tearing up something you've never seen Delcia do like throughout the course of the series. So that's why part of me wonders like even when we first met her earlier parts in the series she might have been holing cuz like we at what point did she become holing like the nine have been connected to this whole holing deal in the first place and Delcia being who she is is always taking advantage of every situation. So like I don't think she ever expressed uh, plainly said it outright when she became Holland. It might have been sometime during season two. Like I said, I get the feeling like it might have before, been before. The reason why she was so cool, calm, and collect, well, at least so. I mean, 
It's I don't I don't know if that would be better. I feel like that would be better, but the sad thing is probably a lot of that time she was doing the shitty things she did, like killing Potter, for example, she wasn't Holland. Maybe becoming Holland was like a last minute thing. I feel like they did kind of go over that, but I don't remember. Cause this is all kind of coinciding with the whole lady situation too, because there's all these kids being taken and all these kids are connected to um well all the people kidnapping these people are connected to the Holland. Because they're all doing this on the lady's order because she's trying to find the kid. But I guess, you know, like I said, once again, why? Who knows? But she's looking for the first. I mean, to be fair, it's like you're the firstborn because Holin can't naturally procreate. So maybe for her, she wants to take the child under her wing or maybe she's looking to like. Because we do see the whole thing with Johnny and um, Dutch's head. So maybe the same thing is hap going to happen. Maybe the lady's going to take over their kid's body because it, she'll have access to Anila's abilities while also having what Davin can do. I mean, to be fair, Davin's whole situation was, and I keep forgetting that, his doesn't, isn't necessarily, well, it's in his system, sure, but the fact of the matter is, I don't know if that's something that can pass down because it was something they did to his head. It was a thing that they implanted in his head that made him like that but maybe it's i mean we do see that it is in his bloodstream too because like transfusing his blood affected delcea the way it did so you know who's to say it didn't you know so now i'm kind of back to no it probably did pass down to his whatever the case may be but sadly garrett kind of got caught up in that too which i love the whole fancy went off the handle things and he's asking questions but fancy being who he is answering the way he did and just and the guy he's like i don't know and he's like okay Thanks, thanks for letting me know, and let's the dude go, it's like, and Fancy's like, who else do I have to talk to? Garrett's like, yo, dude, let me handle that, so, that's kind of interesting, but sadly, Garrett got captured as well with the kids, because obviously, because he mentioned Dutch's name, and it's like, oh, he might have, because he knows Dutch, he can be interrogated to find out what it is the lady needs to learn from Dutch, and then, you know, pre-showing up in time, because for him, it's like, oh, yeah, the person he loves, the person he was missing so much, he's like, fancy, where's my man, and it's like, hell yeah, that's just kind of the person pre is, when it comes to people he loves and care about, he fights tooth and nail and gets angry, so I thought that's kind of uh, pretty neat. This is our first time back on Westerly in a very long time. Like, I'm trying to remember, were they really even there that much near the end of Season 3? I don't remember. I think that's, I mean, technically it's our first time here in Season 4, technically not, just because, on one of the early stages of the season, but also because um, the first episode was kind of a um, flashback, so that technically counts, but technically doesn't count, so I thought that was kind of neat. There's a whole Turin situation. He gets close to that um Holland. Uh he we find out his name is Weege. I guess it's like whatever it is that Zeph did to his brain fried or kind of like set off some sparks, neurons or whatever to kind of make I don't know if he's necessarily human again, but maybe it set something off. Maybe because of the state he was in, kind of in that almost like stationary state. That combined with what Zeph did kind of shift his brain because it's like he's not being a bad guy, he's actually being a good guy, he's actually looking out for Turin and stuff like that, and he ends up grabbing onto Turin when all the others were running running by, it's like, were they not going to go after Turin anyway, or was it because he wrapped around, like, they read him as a whole one because of that, like, how did that work? But the fact is, it seems like he's got his memories back, which is like almost got like this buddy cop comedy feel between him and Turin, we'll probably get more of that as the season progresses, but it seemed like... Obviously, the lady is amassing her army, uh, calling them home or calling them wherever, like, the kids as well as Garrett are being taken because all of them head to the hangar and they take off. So, once again, this war isn't as over as you kind of thought it was. And it's not like, you know, well, Delce is not in a position to do anything in her current state because all the green is frozen. So, it's like, how does the lady plan to get out of the green anyway? I mean... I was thinking maybe that was Dutch who did that, like her coming out, like I thought maybe it had something to do with the lady, but now it's like, in retrospect, it's like, no, that was most likely um, Anila doing that because she doesn't want to give the lady an out, so she froze all green, so... We'll, we'll have to wait and see like what ends up coming about all that. But we learn a very interesting thing at the end of the episode, because obviously throughout the entire episode, there's a whole story that... Dutch is trying to figure out, like, what the whole point of Klein telling her story. And obviously, Johnny has his way of telling things. It's like, oh, like, why do you have to change everything? It's like, oh, yeah, the assassin. Yeah, what about her? You mean him? No, it was a lady. You embarrassed if I be beat up a girl? It's like, no, I'm totally fine with that. But it's like, that's it. And that's pretty genius. Klein knew that her 
brain, her mind would have been read by the lady, so he changed certain details. Details only Johnny would know 100% of the truth, because a lot of the people from back then, they kind of brought it up too in conversation. Hill, as well as Big Joe, both dead. It's like, yeah, you notice that a lot of people die around us, and Dutch is kind of like, yeah, it kind of comes with the territory and stuff like that, sadly. Which is kind of a sad truth, interestingly enough. But, um, yeah, I thought that was kind of fascinating. So now you makes you wonder what other details were hidden away by Klein. Like, obviously, he changed one detail like that, who the assassin was, making it a woman in Dutch's memories when in actuality it was a guy. What is the significance of hiding his identity? What other, you know, he's the first piece to all of this, potentially. Or maybe he's not a piece at all, just what he represents in the memory is what's important, like. Because now it goes, because I thought the whole point was like, the assassin kind of hid their face. Because we see it like when the memory goes back, like their face is shimmering because it's like, oh, I guess that was representing the fact that that Klein was shifting who they were inside the memory. So what else changed in that memory? We we'll probably go back and kind of dissect that a little bit. So I'm very interested to see what else is hidden in there and what this ultimately leads to in this war, this battle against the lady. I'm very interested to find out. Also finding out about how to deal with this whole Pip situation. We didn't get much of it this episode, but how Delsea handles the whole kid situation. We see Davin's kind of handling it in his own way, telling the kid, like, hey, I'm your dad, you know. I love, like, when he was, oh, I completely forgot about that, when him and that dude were having that stem fight that kept, like, stemming up, and partway through it, they're laughing because it just kind of messed with their brains like that, and then Davin's like, oh, I should go talk to him. He's like, give him the birds or bees. Oh, talk about, you know, tell him, explain everything. He even falls to his knees at one point in time because it's like, I don't know what to do. No, I should go off and do that, you know? It's like, and then he's like, oh, you ever wonder, ever really take a look at your hands? And Dutch is like, okay, you handle that after you kind of sober up a bit. So I thought that was pretty neat. So I'm very interested to see how they handle this parenting situation. Once again, I'm curious to get the kid's name as well. I'm very interested to see what the next episode has in store for us with all of this. Because, you know, obviously before they stopped the aging thing, there was a part of me that was wondering, like, are we going to get him stuck as a full-grown adult? Because obviously Davin jokes about it. It's like, well, it wasn't really a joke. He's like, before he ends up older than me. But part of me is like, oh, that'd be kind of weird and interesting if the end ended up being the case. But it's like, no, he's stuck as a preteen. Which is like, oh, you missed those early years and kind of have to catch up on that. But still, I kind of get the feeling like eventually maybe something will kick in and he'll still grow again. I don't know. Maybe they'll keep him teenage for now. Maybe I mean, obviously he has been cured. So for now, he's going to be aging like a normal human even though he isn't one that's going to be a complicated situation all on its own upon this complicated situation already complicated i should rather say so but really that's all i wanted to talk about in this episode to the next time we meet be happy be safe look like to the fullest and enjoy it good day and